So, like, that's basically what I've started calling it. Like, whenever a game starts out shit, gets a really awesome TV show, and fixes all of its nonsense, and everybody starts loving it, I call it the Edge Runners effect. Would that be the same thing with um, Arcane? Uh, Arcane is based on League of Legends. Was League of Legends ever unstable and derided as a bad game? The only, I mean, the only thing I yeah, know, um, the only thing I know of about League of Legends is that its fan base is incredibly toxic. It is, but also like they kept introducing new characters to play as, and a lot of the times the characters were not that great. Or, like, they hyped them up too much, and then when they came out, like, they were just very poorly, like, you know, playable. Like, a good example is Jinx. When Jinx came out, she was, like, really hyped up because of the trailer that they gave for her. But then when you play as her in the game, she's not as good as they made her out to be. Okay, I'm gonna say that for the Edge Runner effect, to be applicable, the game will have had to have been in a very unfortunate state before its revival. And oh, okay, like you know, League of Legends, even if its characters were a bit unstable from the climate I'm aware of, I don't play League of Legends. Like I never heard any big news about League of Legends tanking or being at death's door. Would that be a like, question for V then? Could I ask at some point? I know but, B uh, plays League of Legends. Yes. I was just curious if that was the same thing for that or not. Mm. Yeah, no. The the only the only things to my understanding to have oh, properly yeah. achieved the Edge Runners effect are Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, being the originator of the Edge Runners effect, and Fallout seventy six, because of the Fallout show. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh. Actually, like I'm gonna I'm gonna put this to the uh, I'm gonna put this to the stream chat. If there is anyone out there who knows of any interactive media that died and got revived by a piece of expanded media, um, put it in the chat. Make us aware of it. I want to see if there are any other Edge Runner effects out there. Hmm. Wait, what was the question again? For well, any are there... any other titles Wait. that had an Edge Runner effect. Is it yeah, just... so it's like any, like, basically any video game that effectively died, but was revived after a really popular adaptation came out. I'm not sure okay. if this would count or not, but I know that before the Sonic movie, Sonic has had a handful of, like, ba like crappy titles in their library, to the point where people are just tired of Sonic. But when the Sonic movie came out, people were impressed... But then again, we had Sonic Mania before the uh, the movie. In fact, one of the redesigners uh, worked with Sonic Ma uh, on Sonic Mania, so I, huh. I, that that wouldn't count. The I will say Sonic has its like own pop culture phenomenon called the Sonic Cycle. Right. So I feel like it would be difficult to say like where something counts as an Edge Runner effect and where it doesn't because mm -hmm. like. Like, you know, it's almost like night and day. Sonic's gonna release something great at some point, but it's also gonna release something mid at best at some point. Okay. I feel like there's like an opposite effect to like like a video game that really like I, I don't wanna say like got better but got worse. Because the show is definitely the Pokemon franchise. Because the newer, the newer seasons and all that made Ash more stupid. Oh, uh, I mean, from what I've seen, he starts out his adventure kind of, but like, kind of goofy. Like I'm yeah. pretty sure, at one point in the beginning, he tries to use a lightning type move on a rock type twice. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> I feel like that was like a example of like the show not making the game any better because then people try to do that in the game and they're like oh why is this not working because ash is stupid <laughs> yeah, I guess. that's just poor marketing but then like if we're going for an anti edge runners effect oh god should i be should i be really spiteful and call it the paramount effect oh, i mean paramount halo well 
the Sonic movies were distributed under Paramount. Ah, fuck. Never mind. Doesn't <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just call it the anti-edge runners effect for now until we can find an example of, like, a, like, of the introduction of expanded media like a show that just outright killed its source material. Because I don't think we've ever properly seen that, because Pokemon, in spite of its question, like, the questionable intellect of its protagonist, yeah, because Pokemon like, is still one of the biggest things ever. It is, yeah, it is one of the largest IPs in the world. Yeah, because like I want to say that it also did it with the FNAF movie, but then again, like it's a hit or miss with that movie. It if if it was good or not. I think it's a good there, movie, not a great movie. But go ahead. Yeah, because like, there because there are some things in the movie that just don't make sense when you look at it from like the video game perspective and the lore, are because you? like. I feel like, like I, I, I feel like I, I feel like I want to cut through the miasma of this and just say, like, of course the lore of the FNAF movie doesn't make sense. The lore of FNAF doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, like, because like, if we're if we're talking about an already established franchise, like like the FNAF franchise, and we this was already established before the movie came out, like, like well, yeah. a big example of it. Is that we meet freaking Vanessa in the movie, and it's like, excuse me, this is supposed but to take does... place during the first game. Why are you here? You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to I be mean... during security breach. Well, as <laughs> is it? Wait, is it meant to take place during the first game? I thought it was its own thing, like the I books. I mean, like, I mean, but it's... if we're looking at it from like the perspective of the of the of the animatronics and the state of the place, it's very confusing because like it makes you think like. They're not withered. They're not the nightmares. They're sure not the phantoms. It's literally, and they're not, they're not toy animatronics. They're literally the first game. <laughs> but then they keep mixing it up in the franchise and the movie. And it's like, like what, what is this movie anymore? Because <laughs> then they're pulling in stuff from the third movie. It's like you're confusing everyone. <laughs> I, like again, I'm just like my stance on FNAF has always been that. Hey, and I know this is pessimistic or cynic and like, you know, I'm calling forth the wrath of a thousand FNAF fans that I, I don't know, I, how will I ever sleep it? Anyway, <laughs> like, the lore of FNAF Damn it. is broken in a way that you can't just fix by adding more shit. Yeah. And but also... in the nicest possible way, to anyone who cares about theorizing about the game and trying to make sense of it, that's cool. You're not gonna fix it yeah. by gluing everything together. In my personal opinion, that is subjective, and you are allowed to disagree with it, because much yeah. like me, you're a human being with a soul, you can't fix FNAF's law. It was yeah. designed to keep you invested, not to be solved. Yeah. And also, Dice, we don't talk about Balloon Boy, because Balloon Boy just screws everything up in the timeline. Oh, is that the, that ongoing joke that just appears out of random in front of people? Yeah, that's the one thing I hated about the movie. It's like, it was it annoying was, every time I saw that stupid it was, thing. It was funny the first time. The second time, it got really annoying really fast. And then during the and end it, credits, I'm like, okay, that thing is pissing me off. Yeah. And then, like, the one thing that also bothered me is that... It tried to take from the game, but then you got then you throw in stuff from the books, and it's like, okay, now you're trying to do two things at once here. <laughs> like again, the like the the FNAF movie is also made for FNAF fans, but yeah. it's like, okay, that's inaccurate. It's made for FNAF theorists, which yeah. is fine, but like, what about? anyone else who has never even played so the like, game. Like, like i imagine any eagle like i imagine your dorkos and your mat cats are gonna go into this movie and they're gonna find all of the shit because they are fantastic they are terrifying yeah. when it comes to finding stuff and learning the lore of these things and it's cool and i never take that away from them i'm glad yeah. that it makes them happy i, but I like, just kind of feel like that's one of the problems with the movie is like it tries to do too much. Like, sure, you're trying to fit everything like, into, it's... like, an hour-long movie, but, like, like you're the... trying to do too much. The FNAF... Okay. How about this? The FNAF movie is not on its own a bad product. 
It has good production value. Yeah. The animatronics look phenomenal. And the story it's telling is very FNAF. However, the FNAF movie's issues begin and end with it, it was made for theorists. It was made so game like it was made so film theory would make a theory about it or the very yeah. least that's oh. the vibe i get from all of it there we go well you know everything it tries to do because it almost treats it like anyone who went to see this movie knows 90 percent of fnaf and like that's either really arrogant or really, like, you're either really arrogant, or you're really underestimating yourself, depending on which one of those is true. Because, you know, if you've released this movie, and you've made its narrative with the expectation that everyone knows FNAF, yeah, that's pretty arrogant. Yeah. But if you've made it with this idea that only people who care about FNAF are going to see it, so you made it only for those fans, and you're going to treat it like they get everything, <laughs> Then like yeah, you've you've underestimated your reach. Yeah. Which is also not good. Yeah, I think that's just one of the main reasons why like I have a love hate thing with the movie. Like it's really good quality. I give them that. It's better it's better than a lot of the other like spin off FNAF movies that we had. Like yes, uh FNAF movies? Well like um Wally's Wonderworld or whatever. That movie was funny as fuck. Or like a uh, banana split. Oh, FNAF inspired. And, yeah, FNAF inspired. Okay. That's what I meant to say. I was say, confused because like, it's like, like, wait, we had FNAF spin-off movies before the first FNAF movie. Well, because like, I was kind of concerned. Like after a lot of the other gaming movies came out that weren't that really good, that were live action made, I was just like, okay, like when this comes out, it's not going to be good quality. They're going to just give us stupid looking animatronics that aren't going to look good. <laughs> And then they came out with the teasers and all that, and I'm like, okay, this looks decent. And then they just... I, they're just confusing everyone with the story. It's like, okay, what is this type of movie about now at this point? I don't understand. Mm. It's just like, that's why I'm that's, that's why I'm saying like it's a bad interpretation of the games. Because the games came well, first. No. It's like... No, that's, like, that's the trouble. Like, it is the games. It is the books. It, the FNAF movie, like, the problem with the yeah. FNAF movie isn't that it's doing a bad job at showing us what FNAF is about. It's actually doing a very good job at showing us what FNAF is all, all about. However, it's chosen the very unfortunate route of showing us what all of FNAF is about. All at once, in the for same like, movie. Yeah, for like an hour. So, like... Again, FNAF's, the FNAF movie's problem isn't that it's a bad FNAF story, it's that it's a bunch of FNAF story. You know what it is? What? what is it? Do you guys know about the problem with with uh, Spider-Man 3, the uh, the Tobey Maguire one? I have not seen, seen the Spider-Man movie in a long time. time. Um... Like, I there, know were, that, there were a lot of... I know that there's like, a lot of... There was a lot of surrounding hate behind the movie. Yeah, that like there are a few reasons why Spider like Toby why the Toby Maguire Spider Man three. I'm saying this in case there's a like right because I remember Tom Holland has multiple ones. But yeah, the the Toby Maguire Spider Man three apparently during development, like at some point, someone an exec probably really wanted Venom to be part of Spider-Man 3, which apparently wasn't supposed to be a thing yet. The, the Spider-Man 3 movie was supposed to be about either Sandman or Hobgoblin. And because but Venom was added some, in, it, they threw it yeah, too some, much. Yeah, so it was like... So yeah, it, like, you know, it became too dense because now we have to tackle three Spider-Man narratives, and one of them is the big one. You know, the black Spider-Man suit. Mm -hmm. The Venom story. Yeah. Like, fucking the the archetypal Spider-Man story, but you've got to you've got to run it at the same time as Sandman and Hobgoblin when the people making the movie didn't originally want to tell the oh, Venom story yet. Tell. So, yeah, it's it's 
like it's not bad plot it's plot density like i'd say that if you take a lot of spider-man 3 in isolation and cut, trim some of the fat i believe i watched a video where someone said if spider-man 3 didn't have venom in it it would be better and like that's not because any part of it is necessarily bad or poorly told it's because it's too dense and I feel like that's the FNAF movie's problem. It's not a bad FNAF story. It's doing everything a FNAF story should do. But it's doing all of it. Yeah. Like, if Spider-Man 3 was someone taking three Spider-Man stories and gluing them together with, like, really shoddy adhesive, then the FNAF movie is like if I took all of Spider-Man from the point he gets bitten to the point where... I don't know, however Spider-Man's full character arc is supposed to fully go. With all of the shit in between it, Hobgoblin, Sandman, Venom, Doctor Octopus, Rhino, Shocker, Electro, all of that. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just- It's like if I- simulation. It's like if I took the equivalent of all of the Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland Spider-Man stories and crammed them together into one movie and expected anything to go well. Now, obviously, that's a bit extreme. If you took all of those, you'd get something a lot denser than the FNAF, FNAF movie. But, like, the FNAF movie itself is still narratively dense because of how much you kind of need to understand to really get it. Yeah. Because, like, like, someone like, who's never really played the games, if they go to see this movie, they're just going to be like... Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I was going backwards. They're uh, just going to be like, oh, well... Let's... What's this about? Because I know nothing about the games or something. Actually, you know what? Let, let's take, like, let me look at it from the objective sense of what, to my understanding, because I kind of didn't watch it, what actually happens in the FNAF movie because I've seen clips. So, we get the FNAF 1 animatronics. We have William Afton involved. And Vanessa's also there for some reason. Yeah, so that's, that's right. <laughs> So that's FNAF, so like, that's technically FNAF 2, where we're introduced to the purple guy, who is William Afton, and Vanessa from Security Breach. So that's already two yeah. additional games. Yeah. And, you and also then, have... That, and oh, let's you, not... you, you, you let also have... Yeah. And you also have where William Afton gets spring-trapped, which is FNAF 3. Balloon Boy's also there, which is more FNAF 2, and from what you guys have told me, Balloon Boy serves no purpose. Yeah. And should deactivate himself now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... I was gonna say, there is, like, another part of the, the franchise that no one really mentioned. And that was, um... They did nod at FNAF 4 a little bit, where there's, like, the dream... The the, 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 the dream theory or the, con the conscious theory of, um... Of the, um of the child from FNAF 4 because um, the main character goes to like this dream state where he's trying to replay his brother getting kidnapped. Oh. Yeah, so you're bringing FNAF 4 at that point too. Okay, so that's FNAFs 1 through 4 and Security Breach sprinkled in for good measure. Oh, and Sister Location. Let's not forget about that because they hint at Abby being related to Baby. <laughs> oh my god. And then you're bringing so, in the books. <laughs> so yeah, like, really dense. How, like, how... It, like, imagine your random moviegoer going to see this weird movie about animatronics killing people, slasher movie style. Only it's not about that when you actually get into it. And it's like, okay. oh, okay. Who's Michael? Who's, who's Vanette? Who's William? Who's... A what, what is a baby? What is this tiny, obnoxious balloon boy? What is happening? <laughs> exactly. Ah! It's, like, it's narratively dense. And I know, again, it was probably made with the expectation that FNAF fans were going to be its predominant audience, but, like... Yeah. Can you make... Can you make my margin for entry into understanding this narrative a bit less... Yeah. I'm not saying dense? I hate... I'm not saying I hate the movie, but, like, if, if I were to have maybe nitpicked it a little bit... I would say, like, you know, make a movie strictly about the first game to get people interested in I, it. But then again, I know how that... much is in the first game? 
Okay, I know that a big hang-up for a lot of people, like, a lot of people who defend the movie, which again is fine, because opinions are subjective, but like, a lot of people defending the movie will point out, oh, like, everybody who doesn't like the FNAF movie just wanted, like, it to be however long the movie was of someone sitting at a desk and flipping through cameras, and I sit there and think, like, I mean, that kind you of You can't, like, you movie. can... Go ahead. Like, and I'm just sitting there thinking, you can make an interesting narrative about the events of FNAF 1. Yeah. You just have to take some creative liberties and sprinkle in a bit of narrative garnish in FNAF 1. Like, okay, if I wanted to make a FNAF 1 movie that doesn't lean on, like, FNAFs 2 through 4, and Sistle Location and Security Breach, what I would do is... I would have the night shift situation not being about flipping cameras, but the security guard finds disturbances and isn't glued to his seat, he's going to check them out. Like, maybe on one night he gets assaulted by Foxy.